In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place. I'm Eric Barnes with The Daily Memphian, and welcome to The Sidebar, a weekly show on the community, arts, culture, and more. Today, I'm very pleased to be joined by Toby Sells, news editor of the Memphis Flyer, host of Memphis Flyer Radio here on WYXR, and I believe founder, organizer, cosmic force behind <laughs> the Bigfoot Festival, which is coming this Saturday yes. to Memphis. Yes. So stay with us for an interview with Toby Sells. Toby, how are you? I'm great, Eric. Thanks for having me on the show. Love the sidebar. We, we need to make it a more of a bar. I know. Well, that is the plan. Our mutual friend, Carrie Hayes, that was the original plan. That I think I told you this, right? Like yeah. after our behind the headlines that, that Kerry Hayes, um, we, he did, I think it's when he did the mayor's, he helped us with the mayor's debate the, when Strickland was running against Wharton. And, um, and I'm looking at Natalie Van Gundy here who remembers. And it was just, it was insane because it was live and we were jacked up on coffee. We we're very nervous. It was just like the live debate thing was a lot. And Kerry was just laughing at like how out of control it was pre-show. And he was like, y'all need to do this in a bar. And then in that great, wonderful Kerry Hayes way, he came back a month later and said, no, we really should do this in a bar. We're going to make a bar. Yeah. Yeah. And so then, so that was back when I was still at the Daily News and before Daily Memphian launched and then Daily Memphian launched. And so this is, we're easing into it. Eventually, as we get, we have the setup. Jennifer Biggs and I sat outside t- during COVID and drank wine I and remember. talked about food and- um, and we so we'll we'll start doing it in a bar here as if Fun. we can get past Delta and get past you know the the hellscape in which we yes. COVID hellscape in which we live. Indeed. Um, where do you want to start? You want to start with the big? Let's start with Bigfoot because sure. that's coming this Saturday. This Saturday, four p.m. Memphis made. Come on out. Um, it's going to be great. I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I say that as as a weary, weary man at this point. Uh, and uh, I don't know how every year I don't burn myself out on Bigfoot. I absolutely love mysteries and I love paranormal stuff. Um, Bigfoot's my favorite. And, and every year it kind of gets to this point right before Bigfoot launches where I've watched all the videos, I've collected all the news, I've uh, just read myself to death on the subject. And it's like a kid who's eating too much chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Bigfoot to death. By the time it's over with, I'm ready to like talk about UFOs or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, what, so when you say – how many years have you been doing it? Let's start there. Uh, this would have – we've been doing it since 2017. We didn't do it last year, of course, sure. for COVID. So this will be our fourth year. When you say you've watched all the videos, read all the news, is that all the videos and news since the last time? Or is that over all time? <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, no, it's a, That is actually a really great question. Uh, I do a thing. Uh, I'm a news junkie, obviously. Uh, and a Bigfoot junkie. So I kind of marry those two in, in a segment that I call the year in Bigfoot. Um, and uh, so every year after the festival, I start kind of collecting clips of Bigfoot news that happens in between the festivals. And I present that as kind of the first thing we do. It's the most boring part of the show. So I try to get it out of the way at the beginning. I only like it. So I do it. And it's my festival. You can fight me. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, so I do it. And this year, I've got two years worth of 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 news to look at. And some of it's hilarious. Uh, and same with evidence videos. I try to collect all the brand new evidence videos that have been out there, um, uh, in between the festivals. Tease, tease some of the news. What, what oh. sort of news is – because I'm going to just admit I haven't been up on my Bigfoot news in the last two years. I've been focused on COVID. Um, what, what have I missed in Bigfoot? Well, number one, I'll say I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Bigfoot news, some of it – you know, it's, it's everything from the, the silly stuff to the great stuff to uh, uh, – to how much I think that Bigfoot has really ingrained itself into pop culture, right? So 2020, uh, Apple Arcade game of the year was a game called Sneaky Sasquatch, and I've played the heck out of it. It's so fun. Do y'all know the, you know what I'm talking about? No. no. <laughs> well, you missed out. It's Apple Arcade's game of the year for 2020, and you play as a Sasquatch that runs all over town and steals people's food, and you can get a dog and drive cars and play golf. It's hilarious. It's a great game. Uh so, so that's kind of, you know, the, the height of things. Uh, boy, I don't know why, but uh, last year there were just so many, like, docuseries about Bigfoot. There was this one called Sasquatch, this guy. He's kind of a, uh, this journalist guy. And, uh, and he remember he was working on a pot farm in California in, like, the 90s, and he'd heard this story about how these guys were murdered, and they blamed it on Bigfoot uh, out in these, like, the wilds of California. So he does this big four-part documentary 
on that. He tries to go back and talks to all the Bigfoot people. And of course, they're all kooky and everything, right? So, um, and uh, I didn't watch it because uh, uh, my film editor over at the Memphis Flyer was like, you know, I just skipped this one. So I did. Um, so, so a lot of, <laughs> a lot of the stuff in like pop culture, oops, I'm playing with my thing here. And, um, but, uh, a lot of sightings and stuff, a lot of people found, uh, tracks, this, uh, uh, Ashland, Colorado, there were two big sightings there. This woman saw one outside of a, a planet fitness and like scared her to death. You know, <laughs> um, I know, I know it's, it's so incredibly silly. Um, and then there's just uh, uh, there's a baseball team in South Dakota. They're the Sasquatch, uh, and they're just tearing it up. The South Dakota yeah. Sasquatch, Rapid City, they're killing it, man. They're doing great. Uh, I also found there's a high school in Wisconsin called Bigfoot High School. You know what their mascot is? The Sasquatch. Chiefs. What? <laughs> the Bigfoot High School Chiefs. I mean, makes sense to nobody. It's right there. It's right uh, there. Yeah, it's right there. Um, there was also this hilarious uh, video that went viral of this woman, I think it was in Oklahoma, for her kid's fourth birthday party, she invited this Sasquatch to come to the house, had like a, a big like pink bow on top and was carrying uh, balloons and was all dressed up and stuff, but a Bigfoot, a very scary looking Bigfoot, walked past the window and the kids were terrified. <laughs> they were crying, open mouth cries with like tears coming down their faces and stuff. And the lady was just like, y'all, I thought it was going to be funny. I really did. It really, it really it made went sense the other on paper. Way. Yeah. <laughs> so. was, we, we whiteboarded that thing out and it was, it was, it was humor and right, oh, right. big fuzzy yeah. Sasquatch. And so, you know, we're all laughing here and, and, and that's kind of the, the flavor I take for the festival too. We don't take ourselves too seriously. There's, yeah. there's a big uh, Bigfoot conference that they do now in East Tennessee. Uh, the Texas Bigfoot Conference, and these are very serious. People sit on a panel and they discuss, you know, whatever they discuss and, and things. But you know, it for us, it's a lot of fun. A lot of people take it seriously. I do too, but not like that, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. so we're gonna have uh, uh, news. We're gonna watch evidence videos. Uh, I'm bringing in a guest. Uh, there was this Bigfoot movie called Legend of Boggy Creek made in the 70s. It's this seminal Bigfoot movie. Uh, bringing in the daughter of the guy who made it. She has just restored it for 4K and Blu-ray. Uh, bringing her in. We're going to have a costume contest, which is always a big, big time uh, for adults and kids. We're going to do a Bigfoot howling contest this year. That's something that a lot of other festivals have done. I've never done it. Uh, but I'm thinking, you know, people get three, four beers in them and let them roll. Absolutely. And this is at Memphis Made in uh, Midtown in Cooper Young Saturday. Tell me again what time. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. 4 to 8. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. The, the beer is important. The beer is very important to yeah. a Bigfoot festival. And again, we're here with Toby Sells. Uh, you know him better as news editor of the Memphis Flyer, host of Memphis Radio Flyer and WYXR every Friday at noon. Um, which we'll talk some more about that show as well. The, the, the Bigfoot, I mean, I think we've talked about Bigfoot before and cause I grew up in the Northwest. Some of those early sightings were not all that far from, I think we're in Washington, right? Oh, I mean, that's right. It, it, so it was it, for people who didn't grow up with Bigfoot, it, it was a big deal. Like yeah. it was, it was on the, the shows that were kind of, they would show the video of mm -hmm. the, is there some man? Is this a Bigfoot? Is that a UFO? Right. And as a little kid, you, I mean, it was kind of creepy because yeah. you would be in the woods and you'd be driving through the woods and be, you know, your brother would mess with you or you'd mess yeah. with your brother. And anyway, uh, what is the, is there an origination story for Bigfoot? Just a, a, a story that began it all. There is not. There, uh, there are Bigfoot stories that's, that span the globe. There are different uh, uh, names for it all over the world. You know, that you have the Alma or the Almasti in Russia, uh, the Yaren in China. You know, in Australia, it's the Yowie. Really? Yeah. And, and these stories go back to, you know, uh, yeah. a long, long way back. Uh, in America, you know, the Pacific Northwest, like you said, it's a hotbed up there. And that's where we get the name. Uh, I think it might have been Canada. I mean, with the Salish tribe is what they called uh, the Sasquatch, Sasquets, and that just means hairy man. Uh, but uh, right, <laughs> right around the 1950s, yeah, um, in the 1950s, Ouch, that kind of hurts. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> dude, come on, um, shave that. There was a uh, 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 Humboldt, Cal uh, California. They found these big footprints up there and they cast them. They took them down. This guy, this reporter uh, for the Humboldt Times wrote this story uh, and called the thing Bigfoot because it had a big foot. I mean, that name is right. It's right up there That's with right, walkie talkie, yeah. right? It's, yeah. It is what it, it is, what it is, you know? Um, and so from there, Bigfoot was kind of born there. And then in 1967, these two 
uh, cowboys, they ride out into uh, the wilds of Northern California to find a Bigfoot. Um, and they found one, grabbed their eight millimeter camera out of their saddlebags and shot what is probably Wait, cowboys with cameras. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, they were up there. Okay, to, I got, I, my time frames got a little. Yeah. Mixed. I was like, some of those cowboys Wait and aliens saying. or something. Yeah. What the hell happened? This, this was '67, <laughs> uh, um, and uh, so they jumped and they they shot what the Patterson Gimlin film, which is that you know brown grainy kind of jumpy film, uh, and you see this big dark figure walking across this creek bed out into the woods. Um, and that really started America or started Bigfoot in America, that and, and the, the Humboldt Times story. So in America, that's kind of where Bigfoot took off. But these these stories go back ages. Are they, Have there been sightings around Memphis ever? Are they there? Uh, I found two sightings. There's an organization called the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, the BFRO. If you ever saw Finding Bigfoot, it was that group. Um, and they take in people's encounter stories. And I found two. One was up at Shelby Forest, a group of teenagers. This was in the nineties, they were driving around and they were driving down one of those roads and something big, black and hairy crossed the road in front of them. And it was that fast. And, and that was all there was to it. Um, there's a lot of those kind of sightings. Um, and the only other one on there was this kind of kooky one where this guy was saying, uh, he and his son were out fishing and they found this whole family of them and they like communicated with them and brought them fruit. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's one yeah. of those stories. You had me tell the fruit. Yeah. You know, exactly. like, I, know. I, mean, no, like, I brought him a squirrel. Okay. Maybe like the story has continuity, it, you know, that, yeah. but, but no, we brought, you know, just a little bit of a, like yeah. a kiwi. They really <laughs> love the kiwis. They really do. One of my favorite parts about Bigfoot Festival though, that we've done since the beginning uh, is I opened the mic up at the end uh, for encounter stories and everybody stays for the encounter stories. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, and some are great. Some will just, I mean, it's, it's Halloween, right? And so some of these are like really, really spooky stories and they're great. Uh, we've had a guy show up every year, uh, to kind of give us updates about, uh, this, this Bigfoot that he sees on this farm in Northern Mississippi, not a whole lot of sightings around here. Um, uh, but, uh, but some of these encounter stories are great, and some folks, they, if they are around here, they won't tell you where they where they saw it. The, the opening the mic up reminds me for some probably because we're both news and and all that. Went my first job out of college as a reporter, the old Saybrook Pictorial Gazette, and I covered Deep River, Connecticut, and and Chester, Connecticut, tiny little towns, couple thousand each. And I remember going to one of the first board of selectmen meetings, and board, it might have been old, no selectmen, and. Um, at the end, there's just an open mic part where any resident wow. can come up and address the board of selectmen. It was in this cool, old, very New England kind of uh, hall or church or whatever, you know, vaulted ceilings. You know, it's probably 200 years old. And these people get up and just start talking <laughs> about things that were going on in their little town and things they'd seen and problems they had. And, and some there was never any Bigfoot mentioned, but that would have been more normal than yeah. some of the things. And these people were really backwards. Sure. And it was so odd because – I grew up, you know, and I'd gone to school in Connecticut. I thought of Connecticut as being this very sophisticated New England place. Yeah. And that, and I, so I go, but there were just all these people who lived in <laughs> little shacks and had been out in the woods in rural Connecticut for a long time hearing things and complaining about their sewage fields yeah. and, you know, just all this stuff. And I go back to my editor and I'm like, I, what was that at the end of the selectman meeting? She goes, oh, yeah, you just met yourself. No, she wouldn't have said yourself. She said, you just met Swamp Yankees. And I was like, Swamp Yankees? And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the South, they have rednecks. You know, I don't know what you call them in the Northwest where I grew up, but Swamp Yankees. I was wow. like, oh, oh okay. Oh, my gosh. Swamp Yankees. That's amazing. That's, that makes sense. Yeah. You know that, that one thing new that you learn every day? Yeah. That's what I just learned today. <laughs> and it'll stick with me the rest of my life. Swamp Yankees. I love it. Swamp Yankees. Uh, again, we're here with Toby Sells. Uh, his um, uh, Bigfoot Festival is this Saturday at 4 at Memphis Made and Cooper Young. Tickets in advance or just show up? Or- Tickets in advance are $10 this year. We're trying to okay. kind of just limit the crowd size. Gotcha. You can get those uh, on our website. Okay. On which what, what, Facebook, I'm sorry. On Facebook, yeah. Bigfoot Festival mm-hmm. Memphis. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll talk more about news. We'll talk more about other things going on with uh, Toby and the Flyer. Uh, but first, a message from one of our sponsors. Imani wouldn't be here if it wasn't for St. Jude. And everything was perfect until that day when she was five weeks old. So there was a fairly large and aggressive brain tumor, but St. Jude Children's Research Hospital gave us the ultimate gift in this world, which was hope restored. And she's tumor free now. We came as two desperate parents uh, and they saved our daughter's life. Visit stjude.org slash stjude won't stop now to become a partner in hope and get the new We Won't Stop t-shirt. 
Again, I'm Eric Barnes, and this is The Sidebar. It airs here on WYXR 91.7 every Thursday at 1130. It's focused on the community, arts, culture, and everything in between. Uh, it's not just a radio show. It is one of many weekly podcasts we do at The Daily Memphian, including the Behind the Headlines podcast, a number of sports podcasts. Uh, Bill Drees' politics podcast has been a little bit on hiatus, but it's coming back uh, with some a whole lot of interviews that Bill has done with local politicians and such. Um, we also do Jennifer Biggs food podcast, Sound Bites, which also airs here on WYXR every Thursday at 11. All of our podcasts are on the Daily Memphian site, as well as iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, soon we'll have, uh, I believe next week or the week after, uh, Jacques Osmo, who does the music and medicine, uh, podcast here on WYXR, really interesting, um, conversation about the, um, the effects, the positive medicinal effects that music can have on people, everything from cancer treatment to PTSD to just all depression, all kinds of things. It's really interesting. Um, last week you mentioned something about chocolate. Um, and last week. I made the terrible mistake of eating a whole lot of Kit Kats with Jennifer Biggs, <laughs> Chris Harrington, and um, Natalie Van Gundy. Um, we did two half hour. We did sound bites with Jennifer. We ate about 10 Kit Kats samples, small <laughs> bites and bars. <laughs> I, my hands were shaking out a headache by the end of that. Sure. And then we still had another half an hour and 10 or 11 mm -hmm. more Kit Kats to sample. Different flavors. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. They were they were 19 <laughs> different flavors well, from around sense. the world. Wow. It, doesn't, it, was, it was awful. I was so sick after that. I was sick for – I was sick really the rest of the day. It was really one of the dumbest things. I, it is – I listened – I re-listened to, to Jennifer's podcast and then mine. I think I remembered about – 15%. I mean, like, it was like, oh, wow, we did that. There's it. And towards the end, Carrie, back to Carrie Hayes, he's like, it sounds like you all were just hammered drunk. And it's like, no, it's just sugar. It was just Straight so much sugar. sugar. And being in this room for an hour in the, the Daily Memphian studios. Yeah. Downtown. It's, it's a great, uh, great studio in yeah. here, but I can see how, uh, what was the best flavor? I think everyone agreed pudding. No. I, uh, pudding was pudding, which was really, it sounds weird, but it, it was does. a, it was a, a kind of a light, a little bit of caramel, a little white chocolate. Really, really okay. nice. It was I really good. I figured out it was supposed to be flan. Flan? flan. I can yeah. get with that. That sounds all fancy. Yeah. Like Mexican custard. Oh, yeah. Mexican custard. Okay. What was okay. the worst one? Oh, universally it was the pumpkin pie. Pumpkin, yeah. pumpkin, pumpkin spice. Pie? How can that yeah. be bad? Can pumpkins... I'll uh, get one for you. We'll get one. No, that's, no, that's all right. We put all the extras out in a bowl in the break room here at the Daily Memphian. Mm -hmm. They were all gone, except there's a lot of pumpkin pies left right. in there. Absolutely. As, I think it was Jennifer or Chris who said it was like taking a spoonful of potpourri from Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> was, I mean, I think I'll be curious. We'll do this and we'll report back. You can because um, you like pumpkin spice. You like that kind of flavor. That's not my favorite, but I'll try it. All right. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll report in. Come All back right. um, right. and uh, um, next week, and I'll report in on uh, how Toby did with that. Um, you, I mentioned uh, obviously the Memphis Flyer and uh, Memphis Radio Flyer every Friday yep. at twelve here on WYXR. Also a podcast, I assume. That's right. Yeah. Talk about for people who haven't listened to it and they should. But um, what what can they expect when they tune in? Uh, you'll hear a, from a lot of the the, the bylines, the reporters, the the editors over at the paper. Uh, I really like to get their real actual voices out uh, so you can kind of uh, get uh, get a flavor of who they are, uh, you know, how excited they get. I love it when Chris McCoy especially gets really excited about a terrible movie. He'll be like, <laughs> oh, man, they spent so much money on this new James Bond movie, and it's not great, but I don't hate it. And yeah. he'll, like, get super into it and start uh, uh, start giving you the intricacies of, of all that. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, and then Jackson Baker, when we get him on the show – uh, really gives you some some stuff you're not going to read in the paper, some backstories of of things uh, that happen in, in uh, politics that he talks about. So I really love to get their voices out there and and kind of introduce these folks to a greater audience that way. And it's a whole lot of fun doing it. We what I usually do is go through I go through the paper. Uh, you know, it hits the stands Wednesdays. Uh, we're on Fridays uh at the at the flyer we're just we're really great at the weekend we we excel at uh, leisure time so <laughs> it, it's really great that we're we're out uh, on noon at Fridays and so I try to give you some cuts from our calendar uh some of the big events happening where to go um <clears throat> kind of get your weekend together is what I always say and how to spend your time over the weekend. Uh, so, you know, what I really try to do is get what the flyer is at its heart and put that on the radio. And I think we do a pretty good job. We've got a uh, better, uh, more things coming up. Uh, but, uh, but right now I, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's fun. It, it is good. And it's, we were joking earlier here that, um, 
you know, it's, it's an hour. This is a half an hour and it's just me and you chatting. Yeah. And then, then Natalie will clean up all the mistakes I make and it'll, it'll be, that's still a ton of work, yeah. right? Bringing all those guests in and, and sort of scripting it out the way you do is a really kind of that, that's a huge commitment. It is. And and it is this joke about everybody, you know, during, we were joking about during the pandemic, everybody starts a, a podcast <laughs> And everybody wants to do revisionist history or they want to do uh, what's the cold case one, you know, oh, yeah, I'll just All do those, that one. Yeah. You know, it's a tremendous amount of work to do this. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you're spending what to get that hour done? Five, Five six, six hours. Yeah. 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 And, and, and my part's only half hour. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, and as I was saying, you know, that's door to door. That's from, you know, writing the, the script at the beginning to get everything set up to, uh, you know, hit and send uh, to send it to the folks at YXR and putting it up on, on uh, uh, to our podcast host. Uh, it's a five or six hour ordeal to get it out. Um, but I think it's worth it. I've heard so many people, uh, you know, talk about hearing on YXR and things. It's really great for our brand, but it is a lot of work. And as you were saying, you know, you hear these podcasts and at the end, you know, it's a, you're going through the credits, right? All these produced <laughs> right. by and, and all these staff <laughs> our, our members. Our interns include, yeah. you know, Julie, Jim, George, like, <laughs> I mean, all these people. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we ain't that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. um. Uh, uh, so it, it is a lot of work, you know, and, and y'all have heard those podcasts too, where it's just two guys yammering in a basement somewhere, you well, know, pretty much me and you right now. Right. Well, you Other know, than we're not in a basement, just a couple of swamp Yankees hanging around those <laughs> microphones. You know, I'm so sorry. I had to say it. I wanted to say it. Um, uh, it's great too. Cause neither is a really Yankee. Yeah, I know. You know? That's great. Uh, but, uh, you've heard those podcasts before and, and yeah. they're just not great. So, you know, yeah. if you really want to make something great, uh, it takes a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Flyer, how old is the flyer now? Gosh, Amadi, I should be uh, 89, I think, is when it started. Yeah. So uh, I can't do math. I'm yeah, very so sorry. 30, 35 years. Yeah, 35 yeah, years. something like that. It, it, it's amazing that, you know, what? Is it, that not right? Natalie, 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 Natalie is somehow <laughs> 89, 32. I'm 31 and okay. I'm 30. Okay, it's 32, but I was rounding up. I, I like to round. I like the power of rounding. Yeah, it's great. Because he could Natalie. be off on the 89, maybe, and maybe, you know, yeah. I don't know. We're just kind of, hey, I think this, I think now we're just a couple guys. Just... Well, I know I'm not 35. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but a long run uh, for, for an alt weekly, especially in Memphis, Tennessee. Because you, know, you think about it, you know, like the, the alt, the, the alt, a lot of cities have lost their all week. That's right. And so, you know, Daily Memphis was formed in the against the backdrop of all this cutting of local newspapers yep. around the country and all the, you know, a couple thousand cities that don't have papers now. Yeah. Uh, tens of thousands of journalists have been cut. It's been horrible. All weeklies were kind of, when you look back, it was like the foreshadowing. Yeah. You know, there were a couple of really great, there were a lot of really great local alt weeklies who said, oh, let's get bigger. Let's buy one <laughs> in another city and let's start making chains out of it. And then let's start centralizing. And oh, we took on all this debt to yeah. buy up these alt weeklies. And wow, this internet thing's happening. And some of our traditional revenue is going away. And a lot of alt weeklies are gone. Didn't and make it. it. Yeah. Didn't make it. Yeah. And, and just as a lot of <clears throat> then daily papers have, have shut down That's or right. all but shut down. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and it's awful. I mean, you know, that alt weekly voice, I think, is is really important. And and what I think the flyer brings to the city is that other voice. You know, we can tell stories that that might not make, uh, you know, other news outlets. Um, just like that story that I did about the woman with the license plate. Uh, I really blew that out because that's a story that that, oh God, that, yeah. that the yeah. flyer can do that uh, that others. Uh, they're just their words in there that, you know, you can't say on broadcast television. We, I mean, so just so people who didn't read or didn't see you were on behind the headlines talking about recently and. And it was that, you know, when you personalized license plate and there were some what the state decided were some suspect uh, or uh, letters and numbers in there. I don't think we can talk about it. I'm looking at Natalie here. We couldn't talk about it on TV. We, you handled that beautifully, <laughs> by the way, on TV, because we literally couldn't talk about what we're talking no, about. Right. We only have some innuendo. Yes. And you, you, you conveyed you conveyed the message without uh, violating any FCC or other guidelines. So yeah. And, uh, and, and just chewed all the flavor out of the story in the process. But <laughs> no, it was uh, a good tease. Yeah. Good it, tease. It, that's exactly right. But uh, but stories like that, you know, and, and we can dig deep on on. Uh, on other things while, you know, y'all are out there fighting to get the the headlines and all that. We can kind of be looking, uh, looking at other places for stories. And, and I'm just glad that we're able to bring that to Memphis. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's a, it's a huge sort of, I don't know, treasure sort of a word that I don't know. It sounds like, I'm, well, I am an old person, right, Natalie? So, <laughs> it, but it is a treasure. It's, and it, and it is kind of Thank profound you. that we still, that so many great alt weeklies are not just diminished; they're gone. They're gone. They're and we and we at Memphis were lucky uh, not to have that. Um, 
the uh I wrote down, literally wrote down, as we have just a minute left here, I wrote down big dog. And that's because <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the segue that makes sense only to me and Natalie and and Toby here. That so I ran into somebody, like we were both like coming around a corner in a parking garage. I was leaving work or coming to work, and I turned the corner and guy goes, Hey, big dog. And I just, it's still, it's like swamp Yankee for you. I, I, this was a week ago. Every day I think about that. Oh, and, man. and it wasn't like he was like, Oh, you're, like you're important. It was just like, hey, big dog. Yeah, I was just like, oh, that's, that's just, so great. Hey, that's so Wayne, man. That's just, Wayne just does his thing. You know, what I'm saying, big dog here, and you know, dog is spelled D A W G in that. You know. Oh my god, it was amazing. Uh, another as I was, I, I, I often so when you're on, you're very nice. Come on behind the headlines. Pretty often when we do the journalist roundtables, I constantly miss. This is like behind the scenes, behind the headlines. Ooh, Ooh could be good. I I misspell your name in my notes. I put an extra e in the Toby. I don't know why. I have no idea why I did T O B E Y. <laughs> yeah. And then it's S E L L S. And then I'm like, I got an extra E in the Toby Sells thing. So I was doing that again today and I, I Googled your name, Toby Sells. Have you Googled your name lately? <laughs> Not lately, but I have. <laughs> you might want to Ooh. because it, it comes up as Toby Sells. And then there's a little, um, little screenshot of behind the headlines. It's got the blue and blue and red behind it, but it says Toby Sells actor. Fantastic. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't know who's responsible for that, but I'm glad they are. There's a there's a makeup yes. artist, a horror movie artist guy, which somehow he's fits. incredible. Yeah, yeah. Now, well, this is great podcasting here. Uh, Natalie has the picture up, Actor. and in the little that little like spotlight on Toby yeah. Sales thing that comes up when you search your name is pretty awesome. And the in the bottom right, that's the other Toby Sales. He's in Atlanta, Georgia. We have talked. Uh, before he's in Atlanta, Georgia, he's a creature effects makeup artist down there. He's worked on all the Hunger Games movies. He's living this like crazy, crazy life. And he's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm a journalist in Memphis." He's like, mm, "Okay, that's that's cool." <laughs> you should you should say I, I run the Bigfoot Festival. Right, right. And then he'd be like, "All right, all right, all right, all right big dog." All right, yeah, big dog. Yeah, <laughs> come on up there, <laughs> you and your swamp things. <laughs> Uh, all right. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Next time we'll do it in a bar. Uh, Toby Sells from uh, the Memphis Flyer. Thanks for being here. Thanks for doing behind the headlines all the time. Again, the the Bigfoot Festival is this Saturday from four till eight. If you go on Facebook or just Google, well, first Google Toby Sells and enjoy that. <laughs> then Google uh, Bigfoot Festival Memphis and you'll find out four to eight at Memphis Made and Cooper Young. Again, the sidebar airs every Thursday at eleven thirty on WYXR ninety one point seven. It's also a podcast. You can get it on the Daily Memphian site. You can get it in the show archive on WYXR or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, and we will see you again next week.